everyone. Greetings to Ankara. Apologies for not being there. I love Ankara. I was there when I was studying at university. By the way, I would like to start by thanking in the way for this great uh, organization. They have their work in Buckley. Tech, uh, the teaching motion capture for games and cinematics uh, was what I was uh, teaching and maybe uh, I bored them a bit, uh, but uh, still I would like to thank to them for their invitation. Uh, in Bacchus University Game Design Departments, we went a bit crazy and added this motion capture technologies to our curriculum. So as the poster speaks a bit, uh, we use uh, the Avinda uh, model of XNs. Uh, XNs Glows by Monus is uh, the separate brand, but still prepared, uh, produced for XNs especially. So we use the Glows there and also face facial mockup. For that, we have certain individual solutions. Uh, this was the first time we uh, delivered that uh, lecture, that class, but the results are successful and we want to uh, make it grow. You know about Boglip. Uh, I, I work as a fellow and also a master. Uh, so in 2017, uh, I switched to game design as someone coming from cinema and television. So a virtual reality and um, cinema television students. Uh, we thought how we could uh, combine that. And for the past year in uh, Bug uh, Lab uh, Tagmar, uh, I work uh, as a producer, incubator, and I try to help our team as much as I can. Before this mock-up, uh, yes, class, we had certain things and uh, Professor Given always uh, throws it at me when there's something crazy ongoing and I'm always uh, interested in such things, trying to find answers, what's done in Turkey. And uh, before we had a co collaboration uh, with a virtual studio and we had started the new technologies and gaming class and that class is still ongoing that lecture is still ongoing and there's a lot of interest so in these studios our students have the chance to do some uh, filming Mandalorian is the most known example and there are some lady screens and uh, thanks to that uh, the amount of light can be diminished in every scene and also you know, thanks to the tracking mechanisms in the background uh, in a real-time fashion you can render uh, the uh, footage the filming that would match roughly speaking but of course before and during that class uh, we uh, we're interested in motion capture. We have always worked on that as a team. Here you can see uh, uh, an image, a footage. Uh, taken from a visit I paid to the Izmir Studios. So this is the set of the Weather Channel, even though your motions are not exactly uh, captured. Uh, uh, that tracked and uh, lively uh, certain uh, images are shared. So this is from our image production uh, class in virtual production. This is a work by a student of mine. Our students use game technologies and uh, create content to produce cinematics. So not necessarily they have to be in uh, studios because when we say uh, virtual studios, you don't need to necessarily go to the studio and uh, work with the actor, but you can use some CGI characters, some characters that we know from the game world. And um, 
this may overlap with the cinematics concept. So CGR, computer generated animation, uh, would be maybe a better term to use. So for that, um, also to create content, we looked into things with our friends. Great work really came out of that. Uh, so still uh, like an artist uh, is a book. Uh, nothing is uh, original. You first need to nurture uh, yourself, maybe stealing from other sources and so on and trim from here and there and then combine and then create original so everything is a remix is uh, one theory related with that so this is how i uh, try to uh, teach my students so we use the meta humans uh, and uh, a friend uh, try to enact uh, a scene from interstellar and when uh, we um had not had such things, we either were limited to the animation libraries and the most renowned one, as those uh, who are interested would know, is Mixamo. It's a platform acquired years ago. So many motion capture data is offered from a library to the users. So um, I also show some work uh, on the screen to you as I speak you don't need to hear it all the time but when the sound is really important i will turn it on here on this video unreal engine mega scans photometric uh, methods are used some environments are used and mix up my character is used and kneels and cries that character so uh, when we did not have this uh, equipment, we used to maybe find it in Unity Asset Store or Unreal Engine Market. And also, as we said before, in Mixamo's uh, library. But uh, yes, you can get some great animation animations from libraries, but our game designer friends know that uh, what is uh, recorded from motion capture all the animation might act a bit photo realistically <laughs> but if you will go to more squash and stretch uh, characters which has elasticity and some characters like that like in cartoons they using the motion capture data all of it um, might not offer you the same result just like in tv uh, ads and commercials and uh, tv shows and films you know we uh, see some animation principles uh, coming up with uh, key frames and hands and uh, maybe bringing the characters beyond the physical world and uh, continue with exaggerated uh, effects. Yes, that structure is still in the game design world uh, because having everything in a photorealistic way and producing uh, with the limits of our own body uh, could maybe um, contradict with uh, the structure we have uh, where we can dream everything so what i'm trying to say is that if you have mock-up you cannot say this is the way because you have to go beyond it you have this responsibility here for example you see a work done done by a friend this is from uh, vikings uh, i guess a meta character was designed and facial animation uh, was added and if you ask me how we do it uh, there are some solutions we do in this class and ipads uh, and iphones you can connect to unreal uh, with uh, plugins 
but the regular webcam uh, solutions can work well. And here, uh, a friend uh, takes them to an animation library and blend and use it as such. What we see in our classes, in my classes, are rather more cinematic um, in format. This is another short uh, movie. Uh, so this is in the cowboy world. Uh, so I will share sound to see if we can hear the sound. A Western themed project this is. You can see, for example, fingers and and some weird moves, gestures, and some breakings, and some characters taken from Mixama. Let me turn the sound off again. So here you can see that um, friends from cinema, television, and animation uh, already have learned about uh, such things. The right framing, right camera moves, they have the chance to improve themselves uh, about these. And you can see there's this interesting character, a mix. And here you see some doors which are not working in overlap with the physical engine. So uh, these animation videos are done uh, as someone who uses uh, both engines. I can say that both have uh, strong um, features and you can use both uh, to create uh, cinematics. Uh, but for cinema and television, I can uh, say in the game uh, film, uh, in, in the way YouTube uh, channel, we had uh, motion capture filmmaking. You can uh, follow that. In Bahçeşehir University, I also uh, uh, deliver uh, VR lectures and in those classes, uh, we somehow have this mock-up theme. You have controllers. You don't, let's say, that uh, wear uh, uh, an equipment, an extra equipment, uh, a waistband or so on, but you can uh, be represented with the position of your hands and also um, your hat already because of the VR headset uh, you're wearing. And uh, thanks to that, uh, sometimes people have even breakdance contests. So I won't go into the details. I want to come to our lesson and mock-up uh, mock uh, equipment. You can wear them. And just like VR chat environments, you can use them to reflect some physical movements. There are some people who are doing that. So the uh, VR uh, equipment also have somehow the mocap uh, characteristics, but if you want to control more, uh, maybe you will be using uh, some trackers to integrate your moves on legs and knees and elbows and purchase them. But still, let me continue uh, with this example. You can see the vibe and uh, they have some equipment to imitate the mouth movements and technology is advancing all the time. We need to follow that. And we have this year working, a system working in a wireless way, uh, Movella, uh, Xsense, and VN Avinda. We have this model, but we also have to follow other things. Uh, what's uh, what else is ongoing? So fa facial um, mocap. When I can do it with my iPad or uh, iPhone, maybe I, I have to look for something else. For example, Auto Two Face uh, is another thing that would excite people more. And maybe two D videos acquired from webcams only. 
come up with a skeleton and create a motion capture data. There are some applications, uh, such as solutions like that. And uh, they're now in the testing and production phases, but still the companies have started growing uh, their names and getting stronger. So uh, you cannot say you necessarily need uh, expensive equipment to uh, create mocap. Uh, but uh, indie gamers should not be upset because there are always uh, alternative uh, ways. Yes, of course, the result created with a million dollar equipment would not be the same as yours, uh, but uh, that webcam created image and million dollar uh, worth equipment created image would look different but still depending on the cleaning skills you have out of the data uh, you can use those in some videos for example there's this company called move.ai uh, and they have some moves let me continue you know i talked about ipad and some other similar solutions and uh, facial mockups that you can directly transfer through uh, plugins and this is another image i created this image in a, a different seminar i'm even wearing the same shirt so here you can see a meta human and uh, we did that uh, during the seminar and i was just using a webcam so such technologies are possible uh, to use and as in the way that, um, gamers independent uh, game designers developers you can use them but of course face design is let me say a bit uh, um of an expensive tool for gamers but still, uh, with the character, you can uh, play. And uh, I, for example, enacted that dialogue. You see my face, actually, but the uh, body animations uh, came from Mixamo. Uh, we did not have a body mocap equipment, for example, back then. And this one, Korai Birand, you might have heard of him. And this has uh, uh, become uh, popular. He's one of the uh, important uh, fashion photographers of the world. And uh, he is crazy, uh, as we are, and has been, you know, playing uh, with uh, these new generation uh, technologies, meta human and um, mock up uh, equipment, and so on. So he has been making some even uh, live streaming, and he was one of our supporters during our classes. And he also visited us in our final jury uh, exams and. Uh, shared support and he will continue supporting us but i can say that as such sector uh, oriented uh, cooperation also uh, helps uh, our friends go beyond uh, leaving these things only um, as created content because you know we always talk about monetization especially in a country where there is a lot of um, financial fluctuation that's why we try our best to come up with a sacral industrial collaboration uh, as much as possible and also Korai is uh, uh, helping us but not only that not only him but motion blur and uh, they also support us some of the companies and also they invite us to the next events there are some interesting developments taking place in the world uh, so simultaneously uh, we can mm, find it a bit difficult to forecast where the artificial intelligence is going so this is a fresh uh, out of oven uh, software but a uh, drag and drop uh, is the method used so there are some assets uh, on the right hand side CGI characters already integrated into the system and you only uh, drag and drop. 
So what you uh, capture with your phone uh, turns into a mocap. So the CGI character. So from a, a, a video, you share, you transfer all your movements. Uh, so uh, you can go maybe to the uh, waiting list and uh, have a chance to give it a try. And also you can see that there's also a skill to clean the background. This CGI character maybe is smaller, but uh, through AI it generates. And the outputs are 2D outputs, maybe more for cinema and TV industry. Um, but I can say that it is not only a, a structure which will demand some clumsy or clunky a big studios. Maybe I should put it as such. You won't need to maybe a giant equipment, pieces of equipment, but maybe uh, an acceptable, uh, a good enough computer and internet. Yes, we feel great as we have mocap equipment and we aim to get great results. Uh, but there, uh, we also know that this is not the only way for mocap. So this is uh, some starting point uh, for our uh, class, the syllabus we have. So they start with that. And let me talk about the class a little bit. Maybe there are some professors who are following from other universities. At least we can maybe uh, share so they can also um, uh, offer some ideas. And also maybe there are some friends who are willing to integrate this to their departments and to their schools. Let me talk about how we continue with the class and how we aim to take it further. We use Microsoft Teams as our main communication channel. This is how we channel that. We share the content of the class over Teams, share documents and files. So I consider myself as a nerd of thing uh, of these things, and I read a lot, and I also share a lot of content with my friend. I also have a Discord channel. If there's anyone who is willing to uh, join, maybe you can uh, scan this QR code. And if you can't right now uh, scan it, you can send me an email in my Discord channel. For example, about filmmaking, animation, and virtual production, I share some news, uh, some content, and I have a Discord channel where uh, I have a lot of students. Uh, so right now, more than 300 followers. So I wanted to turn into a community where there's more interaction, but of course, I have some limited time. But as I said before, we started some classes, and and at some uh, and sometimes we lost some resources that's why this is uh, also uh, like an archive for me and i would like to say that you're all welcome and i have a goal to maybe turn it into an interactive uh, platform and i share some uh, content about accents and also a uh, virtual more caps and hundreds of other content and what do I demand from students in this class in the beginning of uh, the term? Uh, I came up with this midterm uh, project. This is an elective course, so it is not a must course. Uh, uh, it is open to game design, but it's also open to other departments, for example, cinema, television, animation, and even engineering. Some friends from engineering also came to my class. So with the mocap equipment, we want to do a teamwork, but there's some friends who never have had uh, such experiences, uh, but uh, teaching them uh, this all, all the way from the beginning from scratch, uh, yes, can create some issues. Some coming from animation are aware of the Blender or Maya, uh, programs or, or cinema for me and to them we try to give them the chance of not creating cinematic uh, i mean games 
an event a live stream demo can be done and we work uh, organize some workshops for it so uh there's also an exhibition uh, area uh, uh just like in mixemo and even though you do not finalize your project in the mid uh, exam period uh, you can uh, create some gifts, I say to my friends, to figure out if we can create our own library. So when it was clear that we were going to come up with this, there was a question as such. As some asked, will you have a mix of more like um, open library which you can share with us especially those game developers who did not have uh, independent equipment uh, individual equipment and um, we thought this was a bit early because we are also learning uh, we are also learning these uh, just now and uh, you know that some animation of files would demand some processes uh, differently in Unity and Blender and engines are updated all the time and we need to learn and unlearn. So that's why we said not immediately the library, it's maybe a bit early for that because we also want to learn. And uh, with the know-how uh, we will have, we will make the results uh, much um, more perfect. So the results with a total of body more cap and also with close will teach us a lot. So in the beginning, you need to know what kind of animations you need, what uh, your project is like, and at least show that to us with some GIF-like images. And how do you save your animations? Do you come up with a game? Okay, then you need to be maybe sharing it to Unity or transferring it to Unity or is a cinematic. Will you do it in Blender? Yes, you can. But if you are going to use Unreal Engine sequence, you can. If you will have it in live stream, then there uh, you can use the MBN systems live uh, lean uh, plugins, uh, you can use them, we said to our friends. So live stream was what we tried uh, ourselves, but in terms of cinematic and games, there were other uh, things from other departments. I also uh, um, assigned some uh, homework, some uh, analysis uh, presentations so that they can figure out how uh, maybe the mocap systems were used in one of their favorite games. So love that on robots. This was very um, um, popular. So the CGI like characters and their animations, mocap uh, equipment, you know, is used a lot. And also in the course, uh, we slowly go down to animation uh, equipment production. So we get more and more familiar with mocap equipment and follow a content to. Uh, uh, produce content and uh, Cora Ibirant, uh, Illusionist, uh, and uh, Motion Blur uh, also supported us. And I shared this image on the left hand side, but you cannot, of course, not read it. I already uh, get uh, mad at my students when they place uh, so much of a text on some PowerPoint slides. Uh, but I only shared that uh, because um, this is what uh, we uh, say to our students that they need to read. And these are the equipment they will use, sometimes uh, three, three hours, sometimes four hours. They work uh, and they uh, start saving their animations. And sometimes uh, there could be some problems in animations and they can um, go back and forth. So this is how Manus close a look and in those, Close. there's some pieces to uh, track a uh, finger movement, some sensors. And also on that plastic piece on top, you see 
uh, there are some sensors. So these are placed where it reads hand, these pieces on these glows. So the position tracking, independent of uh, fingers, regardless of fingers, uh, in uh, MVN, a, win, a, a window system, you can follow. But uh, the information about fingers is followed uh, through the sensors inside uh, the glows. So these little boxes, like uh, boxes of matches, and uh, they will be placed some to certain uh, places uh, on body. And uh, so it's open to tutorials, uh, part of uh, Movinda. And you need to enter your body information correctly and the equipment it to be tightly placed. It's like a, a second skin to you. It's a very tight um, fabric and uh, it cannot uh, be uh, torn apart uh, that easily because it's lycra, it's elastic and um, there are some charging equipment and wirelessly uh, uh, they're uh, transferring some signals. So we said wireless, what does it offer? Uh, some small cap uh, uh, equipment, for example, OptiTrack. And OptiTrack is doing something similar to uh, expensive VR equipment like, like while index or, or one from HP by HP. I'm not saying Quest uh, intentionally, but uh, uh, many uh, uh, VR systems. Uh, so there are two boxes. You know, when Mission uh, Impossible, there are these scenes of uh, robbing a bank. Uh, so they scatter beams and uh, positional tracking is done as they scatter those beams and lights. So a sensor uh, or a camera that is external is not there. Uh, that's why it is a big gaining for uh, the uh, game world. So creating cinematics as such in Mbappe of FIFA, for example, uh, there were a lot of things. Uh, so you, if you can look at the uh, behind the scenes of uh, God of War, then you uh, will see that there are a uh, strong giant more capped uh, equipment and uh, and there will be a millimetric maybe uh, measurings done with uh, within the system and uh, there's a gyroscope in the system and you can find those gyroscopes in your phones and when you rotate maybe your phone or move them in a circular way uh, the gyroscope will sense that especially the rotational movements and an accelerometer and with that accelerometer you can have some uh, directional movements detected as well as velocity or speed and variometer. Variometer, what does variometer do? x and Mobile has have become so popular. Maybe you can wonder why uh, is x better and Rococo is not cheaper. It's because the software oriented results are better. For example, my altimeter, thanks to it, uh, there uh, may be many uh, metallic objects or many uh, phones and in that magnetic area uh, there could be some disruptions and the disruptions uh, can be uh, measured with myometer and the waves in the environment from over the waves in the environment and as a mathematical uh, formula it comes up with that and then uh, the objects uh, the boxes uh, can be represented in their accurate 
uh, places. There's also this buffer, small buffer memory. Let's say that you disconnected with the antenna and you're running towards some place. Uh, uh, let's say that you're climbing a ladder or go down a ladder and there are some uh, connection problems. You stop the uh, recording and while transferring it to your computer, to your software, then you can also transfer the data uh, from that file. It's not a big data. Uh, it's maybe a coordination data in three dimension, but the data can be transferred uh, accurately. And thanks to that, you have very clean animations. And there's also this preservation systems. So I should wrap up um, very rapidly because uh, we have some presentations of our students as well. You uh, can place it on the calendar and reserve and they can work in three or four hour uh, classes and they always uh, also contact me and you can see Hussein from uh, Illusionist and Corai uh, Brandt, uh, he was there and our students and Professor Hussein, uh, agent simulation and VR. Uh, are what he is interested in. And also uh, Zafar, teacher, Professor Zafar, and Guven, Professor Guven, always uh, is with us. So in this regard, I can say that there are people who have a lot of uh, work experience, and this is how they uh, hear what our students have to share when they present to the jury. And here on the right hand side, you see some work our friends did in a recording. Uh, so our equipment is not fully wearable. Maybe this is the starting point. There are more advanced versions, but you can see what's on his shoulders and also upper arm and also waist and ankles and knees and, uh, and also feet. And these are uh, where the sensors are placed. And we have a set of equipment, uh, only a single set of equipment, which means we might uh, create scenes of, of for two people. And this is how our friends rehearse their work, they learn. And I guess they got inspired from the Yakuza game before and the dance characters and retargeting them, the image they create and some similar work. And then they can play uh, the scene of the opposite character. And when you uh, combine them in a single system, it starts working like clock. And also those who create cinematics, they create many animations and everything. But as you can see in this video, Uh, this is a content created with uh, meta uh, humans and the space here is uh, good uh, great uh, lighting here but what about the characters take a look at them on their faces there, there are some problems uh, because of not being able to fully um, figure out uh, the, fa the facial mockups and some problems uh, on shoulders and so on, but we learn along the way and you make mistakes and they're not creating a content for a company. Yes, sometimes we laugh, sometimes yes, uh, but we still learn. And after taking those classes, our students have the chance to use those in their own projects, in their, for example, graduation projects and they have the chance to reserve that equipment uh, for the next classes to kick, to come. This was a cowboy video in which they used MetaHumans and all animations uh, were from Mixamo and they took my uh, course, this course, and MBA Puppet uh, is maybe is similar to Unreal's or Unity's robots. So there are some uh, simple characters and uh, working with these characters is good for some. Uh, maybe they did not have the chance to integrate it to a new CGI, but uh, the big problems that you saw in the previous video are not here. 
present. So uh, our friends uh, used uh, and played those videos and recorded them. And I go on. This is another animation. We laughed our hats off. I'm not saying that we laughed to, to, to mock them, but you know, uh, making mistakes uh, can teach you and you can laugh along. Uh, for example, this one in the middle. He, he is uh, maybe posing a bit mischievously. So uh, uh, the results might not come out as you wish all the time. But I can say that when you get your uh, recording of uh, mocap, you need to figure out, at least guess, what kind of uh, a character you want animated in CGI. So while trying to do that, sometimes you might not uh, find the exact size and limit and measure, but still you don't need to judge because they're not players, that are not gamers, they're technically trying to figure out. For example, this was uh, what a, a student who came from the engineering department did. This is a zombie product. They didn't even have it. They hadn't had an experience working with Unity. Maybe the character here looks a bit funny and uh, uh, maybe a running animation could have been better and so on, but this is a learning environment and without making errors, you cannot learn. This is what we teach uh, to our friends. Sometimes you need to test the limits of the equipment already. So this is another uh, funny running animation. Let me continue. And this project is done completely over Blender. And this is another cinematic and a video. It might look a bit dark. It looks better on my computer screen, but all the animations here. This is a project for one person and it was created in Xsense uh, and we had a, a, a window. All animations like that. Uh, they were transferred to Blender and then uh, they were embedded into CGI characters and dramatically speaking and cinematically speaking, it was turned into this work. So this is like a scene from a robbery. So in some game cinematics, of course, these could be used. And here another friend working. This was an image they had in their presentation and some animation created by our friends. They also produced a game, but the gameplay video of the game uh, is not with me right now, but this is similar to John Wick and some shooting animation and mechanics. This is how they created this and all the animation they recorded where it was used in, uh, in, in the game. And some other games, uh, hiding, crouch, and some other similar animations. Using the enemy as a trench or shield or similar animations. Using the wall as a cover. So what... Uh, a game designer should do uh, in a third person uh, shoe, uh, let me say. This can place you somewhere really uh, unique. In a world where there are uh, few people working, for example, at least uh, among Indies, uh, this might bring you to the foreground in terms of authenticity. And this content, should it be only something that you could reach uh, if you're a student? No, uh, you can uh, have them, uh, access to them. For example, this was created with MetaHumans. This friend modeled the tomb of Prophet Muhammad. 
And about the cleaning rules there, this is an awareness raising video. How to be clean, how to act, how to uh, behave in that region. So maybe this is like uh, an airplane security footage. And they're working with virtual cameras, but the space looks realistic and there are some problems in the characters and textures, but so on, but all the animation and everything. This was done by a single person, all of it. As you can see over here, let me continue. So game incubation centers, in terms of that, uh, we want to present such things to our teams. This is some, a place where you can have access to equipment in those uh, incubation centers. So those uh, are going through maybe a training and uh, who will take their games to publishers. So should you demand, you can benefit from these equipment. So maybe you can say, yes, you talked about prof uh, professor, all the things in equipment in class, uh, but how can we really use it? So I can say that uh, I sometimes ask uh, some of our, some of my friends to assist me. So maybe I serve also as a bridge in between uh, students and uh, the companies. This was another uh, project, school project. They started with basic animations, all uh, animations, uh, all jumping and so on. Um, all animations were created. So level one, level two for companies uh, and for non-companies, I can say. Uh, so we uh, host these teams at Baglep, Tecmer, and Ward Vardia, and uh, in the way team also uh, work with us, uh, help us manage and Jeff uh, uh, support us our uh, new teams. They deliver classes and uh, offer mentorship. So we have a great ecosystem. And when our friends develop their games, uh, they can uh, use all friends, all students who took my classes and share experience, exchange experience. This is what I try uh, as much as I can. So this is the uh, initial incubation teams. We have about uh, 13, 14 of them and a level two incubation also we have that. And this figure is ever growing. And we believe that mocap is only one of these things and we can have collaboration, cooperation in many other areas and hopefully come to uh, a level of world standards to have success for the uh, ecosystem of our gaming world. And if you want to compete with the world, then you need to be able to use, uh, have access, to the equipment that they're using, maybe because of some effects uh, rates, it's not that easy, but as uh, the center uh, and the university, we try our best to do. Uh, I don't know if I have some minutes left for questions or not, uh, but if you want to reach uh, me, contact me this is my email address and i will be happy if you uh, join my discord channel if there are questions we will have them one or two maybe yes we have question the question is inaudible
I could not hear the question, says Artun. Can you repeat the question for me? In 2010, Kinectic was used a lot, Kinect Technologies, through infrared. It's like a webcam, but goes beyond webcam and uses infrared uh, beams. It has also this sense of depth. I don't remember what was the name of the game Steam and Xbox. Uh, so it's an equipment, there's some uh, other advanced level solutions. But in those cameras, uh, many things are two dimensional. You have to face the camera all the time. So it looks like the image that you saw before in webcam. So you can get the results from webcam already. Uh, because uh, the uh, visual reading capabilities have developed a lot in install installations, for example, artistic installations, uh, we see a uh, kind of, and some manipulations on images in some places like bionials, but in game design or cinematic, I have not seen uh, a content created in Kena. So it's a bit limited, I have to say, in my own experience. And thank you for the question. We have one more question. Quest Pro also offers you some uh, follow-up, some tracing in hands, for hands and eyes. Uh, do you use it, Quest Pro? Uh, we don't have uh, our hands on Quest Pro right now, but there could be some promotional videos of Quest Pro. And maybe you have seen some moves. They said, now we have legs, and they jumped up and down. So maybe they fooled people a bit. It, it came clear. And some extents like a mocap equipment also was used. So they created those videos with such mocap uh, equipment and this um, uh, leaked and uh, there could be some videos as if they did them. So uh, their controllers are very good, yes, Quest Pro. Uh, and other than the cameras placed on the device, they have their own uh, cameras. I mean, the controllers and the Quest 2, they did not. But uh, this way, uh, in places where the headset is not uh, seeing you, they can trace your hand movements. And they're working on that, but uh, looking at the videos published by the laboratories of Quest for mouth region, they had these uh, giant, these uh, very big uh, devices. And they have, uh, you know, such cameras placed and they uh, will be able to read that footage from the camera they will get uh, from the cameras placed around mouth. So uh, this is similar to a wide uh, mouthpiece. So it was similar to this, if you would remember. So a version of that, which can be done without uh, placement of uh, an extra device. So in a short time, in real time, it's maybe the device to share uh, the uh, movement roughly. So for professional production, it could be a bit maybe difficult. I know I um, 
talked a lot about that. I could uh, talk uh, about it for hours, but in a very sh small box, they have this uh, mock-up uh, Sony, but uh, they create only uh, rough things. So for democratization, we will need time. And uh, the artificial intelligence sometimes offers movements uh, that are not unex that are not expected yes the software uh, the hardware will develop but the learning mechanisms are what we are talking about so we can see very rapid advancements maybe very simple work uh, webcams it can create a very successful outcomes thank you very much we're out of time uh, and thank you for your participation thank you everyone <laughs>